Asking children and teens about potential traumas they may have experienced can be challenging, particularly for clinicians who don't have a focus in mental health. But we know that these adverse childhood experiences are prevalent and significantly impact lifelong health. So it's essential that all pediatric healthcare providers feel comfortable and competent to do a routine screen for these adverse childhood experiences. In the previous video, we saw demonstrated how a clinician can use the ACE screening questionnaire to interview a parent and determine a child's ACE score. Dr. Lawson met with 10-year-old Sam and his mom Dana and did a routine physical checkup on Sam and had no concerns for him. She was about to finish the interview when Sam's mother raised that he was having difficulties at school and she also noted that there were some stresses at home. Dr. Lawson interviewed Dana first on her own and gave Sam an ACE score of three based on what his mother was reporting. She now meets with Sam on his own to ask him the same screening questions and confirm his score. Hi Sam, thanks for waiting. Um, I talked to your mom a little bit about some of the things that were going on at home and school. And now I'm gonna spend a few minutes with you asking you um, some questions, the questions I ask all the kids. Some of them are gonna kind of fit for you and some of them might not fit so well. But if there's things that you're curious about I'm asking or if you have questions as we're talking, then feel free to ask me about why I'm asking something or ask any questions, okay? Um, the first thing I wanted to check in about was how have things been going at home? Well, okay, I guess. Okay, you guess? Yeah. yeah. And it sounds like there's a lot of things that have happened, lots of stressors and lots of things that have happened. How's your mom doing with all of that stuff? Okay, you guess. She's fine. Think she's fine? Mm -hmm. Have there ever been a time where you feel like your mom isn't able to get out of bed or do the things that she needs to do? No. No? So no. she's getting out of bed and she's looking after you? Most of the time, yeah. Most of the time? Mm -hmm. well, what does most of the time mean? Well, she's mostly doing a lot of, well, she's doing a lot of stuff, so she, she's doing things pretty good, I guess. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you might think she might do a bit better? Oh, maybe doing or getting some dinner, maybe, because sometimes I just have to get a bowl of Cheerios dinner. So sometimes you're not having dinner? Yeah. You're having Cheerios for dinner? Mm hmm How many times a week would you say that that's happening, that you're having Cheerios for dinner? Pretty much every day. Pretty much every day? Yeah. And is your mom having Cheerios with you, or are you on no. your own having Cheerios? What's your no, mom doing? mainly by myself. You're by yourself having Cheerios? And when you go to your fridge and you open it up, or is there food in your fridge? If you ever had a time where there hasn't been enough food in your fridge? No, not really. So there's food in your fridge? Unless I ate too much. <laughs> Unless you ate too much, okay. And have you been worried about having food? Has that ever been a concern yeah. of yours? Mm. It's getting pretty cold outside. Do you have a, a coat and winter boots and things yeah. to make sure you're all set for the winter? No. My mom keeps saying that we might go to the mall or go shopping for one, but we, we never end up doing it because she's too busy with other mm. things. So, how's your mom been doing? Okay, I guess. Pretty good. Yeah. Are there ever any times that she seems down or upset for days at a time? That she hasn't been getting out of bed? Or that she seems to be having a really tough time? She might be a little bit stressed because of grandma. Can you tell me more about what you mean by a little bit stressed? Well, they've been arguing and yelling a lot, so. Who has grandma and mom? Yeah. They've been arguing and yelling? Mm hmm Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, they're just arguing about things not very nice. I haven't listened to it very much. I just go to my room, so mm -hmm. it's, it's not very nice. And when they argue and yell, have there ever been times that you've been afraid that someone might get hurt? Mm, once, maybe. Once. Can you tell me a bit about that time? Well, they were just getting really mean, like more than they usually would, because it's happening quite a bit now. But <sighs> it wasn't, wasn't too bad, I guess. So the fighting between your grandma and your mom, how intense does it get? Is it 
arguing or is it yelling, and screaming? And when they argue and yell, have there been times when anybody's um, been physical, used their fists or hands? No. no. Any other way that they may have physically been fighting? No. No. What about throwing objects or? No. No. And what happens to you when they're fighting? Where are you? I just go to my room and try to ignore it. Yeah, so you're going to your room and yeah. ignoring it? And kind of what happens afterwards? Well, they kind of just stay away from each other for a while. Okay, they stay away from each other. So when they're fighting, it's what, what I'm hearing is it's words? That they're not physically hurting each other? Mm -hmm. And it gets pretty scary. Yeah. When people talk to you, um, has, have, has anyone said mean things or hurtful things to you? Well, sometimes my grandma's criticizing me a little bit. Like, she'll tell me I'm not doing something right, but then won't help me with it. Like, won't explain it. So you're feeling criticized by grandma. What about mom? Has she ever said mean or hurtful things to no. you? No. Um, no. Sam, has anybody touched your body in an inappropriate way or a way that you didn't like? Mm, what do you mean? Has anyone touched your private parts or touched you in a sexual way? No. Sam, does anybody in your house ever hit or spank you? No. What about hurting your body? Has anyone hurt your body? No. And so when I say hurt, I mean things like hitting, kicking, punching, scratching. No. So no one's hurt you sexually or, or physically? No. With anyone in your house, has anyone been drinking or have you ever been worried about people drinking too much or getting no. drunk or? Mm -mm. No? What about other drugs? No. No? So you don't have any worries about your parents using drugs or alcohol? No. What about grandma? Anybody else in your family that you're worried about in that way? No. So Sam, how do you feel in your close relationships? Do you feel loved and cared about and special? Mm. Mm, you're shrugging. What's, what's that mean? Well, my mom pays more attention to my little brother. And then when I try to talk to my mom, if I want something, she won't really, like, she won't really listen that well. She just kind of keep doing what she's doing. And then my leader asks me again, what did you want? Not a lot, though, really, at any time. She do that. So you're not feeling loved. Is there any place in your life with any adults or with anyone that you're feeling loved? I like to be in my room. I don't really have anyone else, no. So if you had a problem, or you were hurt in some way, or something was happening, who would you go to for help, or what would you do? I wouldn't have anybody. I'd just go to my room and think. Okay. I, like, I just like being in my room sometimes. And has anybody in your family ever been in, in jail or in prison? No. So the stressors in your house and what's going on, making your mom not be there for you as much. What, are, what do you think are some of those stressful things? Well, probably because my grandma's fighting with her a lot, and also my dad moving away because they were divorced. That's right, your mom, ago. your mom told me that your dad and your mom aren't together anymore and that he's moved out to BC. Do you see your dad? No. no. When was the last time you saw him? A year ago. And is there a plan for you to see him? No. No. What I've heard is that, you know, there's some stressors and some things that are hard for you in your life, and you talk to me about the arguing that's happening between your mom and your grandma, that, it, that your dad has moved away, that you're not always in the right clothes, and you have to fix some of your meals and that you're not always feeling loved and special. But you've also told me that nobody's hurting you in a physical or in a verbal or a sexual way. No. Nobody's saying mean things to you. That you're not worried about your mom emotionally and that she's not worried about her all the time, struggling or emotionally. Mm -hmm. And that 
nobody you know is in prison or uh -huh. has been in prison. No. And you don't have any concerns about drugs or drinking or in your home. Sam, do you think some of those stressors are what's making it hard for you at school? I think so. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Why do you think that might be? Maybe because I'm thinking about that and then I'm not like thinking about what I'm doing at the moment and then I don't get very much, I don't get a lot done. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, Sam, that when things are stressful at home that kids have trouble concentrating and it affects them at school. So I'm going to talk to your mom more and we're going to try and figure out a way that I can help you and your mom with some of that stuff. Okay? okay? Mm -hmm. So thanks for coming in. Dr. Lawson's interview with Sam confirms that his ACE score is 3, as he endorses loss of a parent due to divorce, physical neglect, and also a sense of emotional deprivation. So we know that Sam is at elevated risk for a host of physical and mental illnesses beginning in adolescence that could persist throughout his life. But Dr. Lawson's now in a position to meet again with Sam and his mother and collaboratively develop a focused and evidence-based intervention plan that should help change Sam's lifetime health trajectory. Clinicians can visit the online Trauma Toolkit website for a list of resources on these evidence-based interventions, which have been shown to be helpful for children like Sam and their families.